Chris and this is my how to polish aluminum wheels video so I wanted the Jeep to have a magic spare so I bought a brand new wheel now we have the standard that we have to polish all the other ones so they all look the same but you see how neglecting your aluminum wheels over the years they just start to look sad and depressed and they really do compare to the shiny one so I like to take the wheels off the vehicle and polish them so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna go ahead and use the bleach soap and scrub them the way I've been doing it for over 20 years and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to go ahead and scrub the wheel too. We're going to try to get this stuff as clean as possible before we start polishing it. So once you got your wheels on clean, you got to rub your hand in here and you got to feel and make a judgment call whether this needs to be sanded or not. These need to be sanded. Pretty freaking rough. So I would start with about a thousand and if you can't polish it out with a thousand then you want to do 600 so when you take your thousand grit I mean you are literally sanding this but you got to constantly clean it make sure there's no sand or grit in there that's going to put scratches on there so let's go ahead and do a little wet sanding with some comment and check that out So you're going to spend about five or ten minutes you need to get all that little roughness off. the idea is to get this where you run your hand down and you don't feel like grit or anything nasty polishing these wheels is not something you do all the time this is an in-depth real polish that's going to last another 20 years or whatever these are on that 15 year old jeep but these are a lot older these are the american made american racing ar-172s the best way to do this is one wheel at a time take them off the car waist high level table and you need good lighting. We were just kind of scrubbing them with 1000 outside to knock as much off as we could. Now that we get them in here, we're gonna to have to look at every little detail on these wheels. See this? We gotta grind this flat with a little Dremel or a little sandpaper or something because you can't be polishing that. It's gonna grab your rag and it's gonna screw everything up. So we are polishing wheels, but you gotta do all these little detail areas in here. That's the stuff that's gonna make the wheel pop and make it look brand new. If you just polish this and leave all this ugly, I promise you it's going to have an ugly look to it. So you kind of got to study your wheel and see what's going on. It looks like that these were painted silver. So all we're going to do is sand these. I don't care if they're bare or whatever they are, but we just need to clean up all that dirt and make them look like one uniform color. I'm not going to paint them from the other side. That's way too much work. So always do the nasty stuff first. Get it out of the way, then work your way up to the final polish. So we... Feel in here, it's all rough and nasty. We're gonna take 180 sandpaper and we're just gonna sand this until we get it as clean as we can. Now be very careful and don't scratch it right here. I mean, just a few seconds on there, we already have a huge difference right there from that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and clean them all up. Okay, and it's very important to clean this one too because we got brand new center caps and this will just scratch the crap out of them. So every little detail counts get a little wire brush in here take your time and just scrub them out we don't need a polish in there but definitely you can see the clean one right there and i don't get triggered in the comments very often but it's ignorant statements like oh all you need is a power ball a power ball is a detailer's tool or it's for wheels that have like intricate shapes like the wheels on my chevelle the torque thrust twos you can't be polishing all in there so you have to get one of them balls a wheel like this, you don't need that power ball. You know, it's actually got a lot of flat rim right here, so actually polishing it with your hand, a flat hand, is better than trying to get a power ball in here. These don't need to be polished, but that would be an excuse for a power ball. But these wheels, a power ball is not really what you want to polish these with. But one of these days when my Chevelle wheels get nasty, I will buy a power ball to do those wheels. And I do them off the car because if you do them on the car, it's very hard to say, oh, well, let me drive forward and flip the wheel the opposite way. And then you'll find out that you left a lot of stuff once that wheel turns. You get what I'm saying? So then to clean all the lug nuts, you just get some steel wool. You don't polish brand new chrome with steel wool, but this old stuff like this, it doesn't hurt it at all. And sometimes that rust, you got to get a razor blade and kind of cut it off. But just keep working at them. That's all we're going to do. Then we're going to spray them with WD-40. So then we're going to save these, just polish with... Stainless steel, the quadruple zero, super fine. Okay, then the super sketchy hard part is sanding out these little gouges because when you're running your polish rag, it'll snag and just screw it up. It won't polish in the middle. So you got to figure out a way, get a little Dremel, something, 
to deburr that right there. I'm just going to use a little Dremel. Okay, until it goes away. So once we start getting everything ready to polish, we want to go back to a thousand and just kind of go in depth a little bit more and recheck. You got to think like a lathe. If you're going to go five times here, you got to go five times there, five times around here. You know, if you're going to apply pressure like this, you got to go around the whole wheel. You're not going to screw it up, but that's the idea that you want to pretend that this is like being machined, you know, on a super fine level. And you kind of see how just sanding it with 1000, it's already kind of getting a better look to it. All right, so now we got to address these little snags. Whenever you're polishing a wheel, you want to come up all the way to that lip when you polish. And be careful, man, because you can slice your finger open on these aluminum wheels, but you really do need to run your finger down and check for anything that's going to gouge because you want to polish as much as you can in there. So all this jagged stuff, this is like a little knife right here. we got to dremel that out. Okay. So now we can run our finger down. We just don't want it to snag the rag while we're polishing. So then now with our thousand, we can go up to this little edge right here and sand that too. All right, so now we're ready for polish. So for polish, I used to use this stuff called Green Magic, but I think it's all the same. As long as you put it on there and it makes like this black film that comes off, that's what you want. Okay, but every time you buy this, always open it and make sure it's fresh. This stuff will dry up and it won't work right. So we got nice wet compounds, you can see. But see when we rub it on there, see it's making this black stuff like that. If it does that, it's gonna work. So what I've always done is I always use an old sock with a hole in it. And if that sounds dumb to you, go buy you some real polishing stuff. But I've been using these for 20 years and uh, it works fine. Okay, two socks, turn inside out, one to apply it and one to polish it. Just whichever one looks cleaner to polish. This is real easy, you'll get the hang of it. Just wipe the polish in. And then you see it's taken off that layer. I'll take my polishing one, you can do it however you want. And just go like this. And just this first little result that you see is gonna motivate you to do the wheel. And then all the little sand scratches will just magically start going away. That's why you want to take the little uh, burrs off of here because you're gonna run this down in that channel. <clears throat> try to get it as clean as possible since we want this thing to look beautiful we still need to get down there a little bit more and right there too so we're going to do a second application okay so just get a bunch on there do it again okay but we put a lot on there because now we're doing this area and we're going to start on the next area kind of in thirds or fourths and it is a long process because i like to do the rim first and then do that but whatever you feel like doing. So you notice how I'm not doing little swirly motions, I'm doing lengthwise motions, and that's what we're gonna do on the whole wheel. See, we're just going like that. Just repeating that step until all the little sand scratches that are all uneven in different directions, all those disappear. It's gonna keep doing that. That's what I'm gonna keep doing. Let's go ahead and finish this wheel up. So if you thought I was stupid talking about using those socks, these have to be thrown away now. These are going to be completely destroyed and nasty. So these two socks just to do this one wheel and it's not completely finished. So I got another one with a hole. I think I'm out of bad socks. Okay. So then once you start getting it polished out more, then you can start using your circle motions and areas like that. You'll figure out your method real freaking fast. So then once you think you got it, then you take a clean rag and then you're just going to try to buff it out one final time. Let's see if this thing's ready. Okay, I turned it inside out. Now I got me a freaking polishing glove. So whenever you do some really old ones, you're going to find out that you kind of plateau because they just have sand etched in there and they've just been out in the weather for so long. But the only way to make these look brand new again is you would have to be able to take a thousandth of an inch, the top layer off by hand somehow, and that's probably not worth it, and it's probably not a good idea. But we got some super spotlights on these. Check out how they look in normal light. But see, in normal light, the thing looks freaking beautiful. So they still make the original style center caps for these wheels. I got these from Summit Racing. So these going from the other side, that's why they need to be cleaned or you'll put scratches down them. So then I've seen these and at a glance, if it shows any red, that means your tire has low pressure 
which is pretty cool. So it seems like these things were $15. Let's see if we have good tire pressure. All the red should go away. Oh, it did. That's pretty freaking cool, look. Dang, I like that. That's fancy, just at a glance, man. I really like that because this Jeep doesn't have any tire pressure sensors and my daughter's going to be driving it, so that is freaking cool right there, look. Walk outside, see that? Freaking awesome. I like it. Okay, so you see what we just did there. We turned an old freaking dirty wheel into something that if you've seen in a swap meet, you would notice that. It doesn't matter what you like or not. You would say, oh, that's a nice set of wheels. Okay, so the wheels used to look like this. Now they look like that. Okay, most people would have got this Jeep and said, man, those wheels need to be replaced for about $100. There we go. And that's all four of them. I just haven't did those yet. Did we make an improvement and was it worth it? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, turned out beautiful. Got a video coming soon on restoring this bumper. So if you have some old aluminum wheels like that, try to get the center caps, polish them up. Those are staying on the Jeep forever. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.